God bless you. I'm Aaron Cunningham. I'm going to do a teaching tonight. It's going to be a troubleshooting faith, um, your faith, other people's faith, and then creating an environment that's conducive for, to mighty works. So it's it's a uh, and faith is the Hebrew word uh, aman. It's certainty, which is, it can be kind of tricky sometimes because if you don't have faith, how do you get more faith? Faith comes by. Hearing. By hearing, okay. So, how, so how, how do we get the certainty that we need to move these things? It's by hearing. It's, it's, that's one of the ways. Um, but it, it could be con creating uh, conducive environments also. So sometimes we don't have the faith for something in our lives. And there's a big, a, a big thing with any of the mighty works, uh, not to take it too life and death. Don't take it too serious. Now, all of us are going to fail. I think uh, it was uh, Oral Roberts said about 10% of the people he ministered to got healed. But those 10% were very thankful, right? Okay, how, and we, sometimes we go over healing ministries and say we don't find out that we don't find out about the, the 90% that didn't get healed. We only hear about the, the 10%, mm -hmm. which is important for in, in any kind of classroom. You go, okay, this one didn't work. If we watch a basketball game, we see Steph Curry miss basket shots. Okay, if we only saw the highlights, it's not going to be a good representation for other people to learn, too. Um, and so... Um, with mighty works, with faith, and, and uh, cre creating an environment, and also troubleshooting. Just because it, it didn't work the first time, or it didn't work immediately, doesn't mean it's not cooking. I think sometimes it's cooking. Jesus Christ spoke to the fig tree. C killed it, right? Did it happen immediately? No, it came back a couple days later, and Peter was like, Master! It worked! And you go, okay, so sometimes, so sometimes it's going to be cooking. But we'll, what we're going to do to stimulate... Amon. Amon is, is the Hebrew word for faith. To stimulate your Amon. Malani did a teaching at the beginning. All of us know, every one of us knows what Yahweh wants us to do. Sometimes we're like, well, I really don't know. I don't know what he wants me to do with my life. That would mean that we would not be held accountable. All of us know what we're supposed to do. We have an idea. You're supposed to go this way. You're supposed to stop that. You're supposed to start this, or whatever it is that's going to require faith. Just like with Jonah, he knew what he was supposed to do. So all of us, even as a kid, you know what you're supposed to be doing. So the idea is how do we get started. And what we're going to be doing tonight is uh, um, I'm going to try to create an environment to stimulate your faith. And so this is going to be actually, instead of me giving a testimony to somebody else, we're going to be hearing about somebody that actually got to witness a mighty work. Okay? And when you're... And when you're uh, and, and see what it does to your faith when you get to watch it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to kind of examine what we just witnessed. Okay? That always reminds me of Wayne Gretzky with his <laughs> comment that he said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Amen. Oh, I turn this out. That young Carlos who's been driving me around, Alan, and a woman brought a little boy in four years of age who was born with 26 diseases. He had no male organs on his body. He was born blind and deaf and dumb. His tongue hanged out of his mouth and lay on his chin. Both arms and legs were twisted together and matted together. The elbows penetrated into his little tummy. His knees touched the elbows and he had no feet. Clubs, you don't put shoes on clubs, you put shoes on feet. The mother brought that child in. I wrote the card out. I gave it to her in the afternoon service. I was preaching faith. And she was there all week long. But the card was never called. Sometimes we get in too big of a hurry. We run into church. Quick preacher, lay hands on me. Bible says lay, suddenly, lay hands suddenly on no man. Some people need to sit down and hear the word of God preached. And they need to get those preconceived opinions and them doctrines of devils that they have in their, in their brain. And they need to hear the unadulterated word of God that God's not dead but he's alive and he's the same today as he was yesterday. That woman sat there with that boy three services a day. She came from another city like you did. <coughs> following Sunday she came after I preached in the afternoon she said brother Shabbat I run out of money have you ever been there and she said my boy hadn't been prayed for yet 
I said, I refuse to apologize for the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost used Brother Allen in a different way. And every night he would minister, but it was in a different vein, and he didn't call the prayer cards. But she said, I've been staying in the hotel. I've been eating in restaurants. I've been giving in the offering three times a day, and I'm down to my last $20. I've got to go home tonight. Can you do something? I said, I can do one thing. If he don't call that prayer card tonight, I'll take that boy over to his trailer house and make him lay hands on that baby. I'll get him to the man of God. And I meant that. I would have done it. I, I was leading the singing that night and introduced Brother Allen and he popped out on the stage and he said, we're going to receive an offering tonight quickly. It's going to be an offering of faith. Don't get nervous. I'm not going to take another one. <laughs> but I might. <coughs> And when he said, I want you to give an offering of faith, a puzzled look came on the faces of everybody, including me. I never heard him use that terminology before. And he said, now if you don't know what I mean by an offering of faith, he said, I want you to give God something you can't afford to give. Because if you can afford it, there's no faith attached to it. It's logical. Never heard that expression. The first thing I saw was that little woman had the baby in her hand, tossed in another woman's arms, and she come running. She was three-fourths of the way back, and she beat everybody down there. He was holding the buckets. And I saw that woman come running fast. I mean ran. 3,000 people in that auditorium. And she threw something in the bucket. I'm on the platform. I'm nosy now. I jumped off that platform. And I looked in that bucket. Because that woman told me all she had was that $20 bill. And when I looked in that bucket, you know what I saw in that bucket? $20. She's in Birmingham, Alabama, and she lives in Knoxville, Tennessee, but she wanted a miracle. She needed something from God. She said, Lord, I'll walk home if you just heal my baby. When I saw that $20 bill, I ran behind the platform and I cried like a baby. I said, oh God, I've been trying to teach that woman faith all week. But I said, oh God, give me faith like that woman's God. I don't know whether I could do that. You don't know whether you can do it unless you're in a similar situation. That man of God received the offering, started preaching. He wasn't 15 minutes into that service when all of a sudden he said, <coughs> he said, I'm, I see a big building. I said, oh, Lord, here we go on another trip. <laughs> this is how God used him. He said, it's a big old white building. I'm sitting there unmoved. Because I hear it all the time. He said, I'm inside the building now. And he said, oh, there's no doubt where I am. He said, I hear all them babies crying. It's the maternity ward in this hospital said a little baby was born he said I see 12 doctors around him he said that little baby was born with 12 14 21 20 26 major diseases and when he said that I sat up and I said my God tonight's that baby's night tonight's that baby's night He said the doctor said the baby wouldn't live to see its first birthday but he said the doctor's wrong he said that baby's approaching four he said i see mother stuffing a suitcase she's going on a trip another lady's with her put the baby in a bassinet it's in the back seat of an old ford he said i see the tennessee alabama border he said that car's pulling in on the parking lot he said lady you're here tonight Bring me your baby now. God's going to give you 26 miracles. Yeah. Not tomorrow, Benny. Now. God's going to give you 26 miracles. That little woman brought that baby. Four years of age. Put it in the man of God's hands. And he started to walk back and forth on that platform. I leaped from my seat and walked with him. 
3,000 people stood to their feet. He said, I want everybody to close your eyes and pray with me. I said, not me, mister. I'm going to watch this one. <laughs> I've been waiting all week for this. And don't you all look so sanctified. You're just like I am. You want to see something too? <laughs> And I'm standing there right next to him. And the first thing I saw was that tongue laying on the chin, snapped like a rubber band. And it went in his mouth for the first time in four years. Those little blind eyes, you didn't know whether they were blue or brown or what color they were because it was nothing but milky, solid milk. You knew the boy was blind, couldn't see. But I saw two whirlpools in those eyes. And all of a sudden, you could see brand new blue eyes coming through the milky colored condition. Are you listening to me? I'm talking about a God that's not dead, but a God that's alive. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank God for his anointing. The next thing I saw was those arms and legs began to snap simultaneously as they kicked out for the first time. Standing there in front of those people, there's no shoes on clubs. Those clubs were there. But I saw God create feet on that little boy's legs. I, saw, I used to buy my children, we used to buy them silly putty when they were kids. I don't know whether they have that now or not. But they used to make things out of that stuff. And it just looked like God was using silly putty to put a foot on the end of that boy's body. People's hands were raised. Some were fall, falling under the power. Some that didn't go down fell down. I mean, you were, we knew we were in the presence of an awesome God. Faith had nothing to do with this. With this was God working in the midst of His people. This was a sovereign act of God. Mama standing over here on this side of the platform with her hands raised, tears streaming down her face. He put the child down. This boy never saw his mama, never spoke, never walked, never talked. And when he put that boy down, he took his first little steps. And when he saw Mama, he ran after her. I'm running after him. He leaped into his Mama's arms, wrapped his arms around her, and I heard him say his first words, Mama, 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 Mama. mama. <laughs> we look at what with testimonies and crisis inside of us. How long was that? Was that, about, was that four minutes? It's 13 minutes. It was 13 minutes? Yeah. Okay. It was like 13 or 14. No, Dad edited it. So I just want to make sure I'm not going to go over time. We're, we're, with the testimony, Christ is inside you. And with some of the things we've already tried in our own lives, there's, there's, whether it's healing, mighty works, walking on water, a lot of us want to walk away from it because it makes us feel vulnerable. But we don't know if there's a little boy like that that's counting on us tomorrow. Yeah. We don't know. And, and so some of the little things we're being called to do is building up to that. And when, are you sure? I mean, wouldn't that stink if you found out that little boy was never healed because you didn't rise up? Okay. Well, I'm going to disagree with some of the stuff that he did say. He said this was not faith. I'd say absolutely it was faith. What did we just witness? We witnessed a lot of different things. And then, and then I'm going to go into my testimony, so please remind me if I, if I get off track. As I'm witnessing, uh, witnessing and listening to this, I got to see lots of different kinds of faith. Certainty. And that was the biggest thing he ever imagined. He, he, and, he, and, and his opinion, this is just Yahweh doing something. And I would say, no. I got to see a lot of different stuff. Um, a faith offering is giving something that you can't give. And so a lot of times you want to find out what you're supposed to be giving possibly. It's what you don't want to give. And so whether it's money, whether it's time, whether it's your children or whatever it is, it's that, that's, Yahweh wants faith from us. So none of this stuff happened until what? The minister, the minister got a word of knowledge. And we're, before I even go into that, Jesus Christ one time, he went to a guy who was blind and he says, uh, rub mud or something on his eyes. He says, do you see? He says, I see man as trees. I, that didn't work, huh? 
Let's try this again. It's problem solving. Did, did Christ have to produce faith? Mm-hmm. So he had to figure things out. So don't be so hard on yourself when you're trying to figure things out. What I believe is even on the, when we're witnessing that right there, Christ is still figuring things out. And he's working through many people. Here's the head. Here's a group of people. Here's testimonies. How many days have gone by? I think he said three. Three days of what? Faith. Certainty. A, a conducive environment. Every one of us believers, when we go to a, 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 a three-day festival to Yahweh, what happens to your faith? It builds. It, it, it's so important for us to do something like that. Once, twice, three times a year, we do nothing but celebrate Yahweh and we're around believers witnessing. What does it do? So after three days of this, what else have think about it? It's like a, a cooking, a cooking environment. And then he gets a word of knowledge, do a faith offering, and nothing happened until that woman what, giving the money that was giving the money what necessarily changed everything? No, it was what Yahweh told her to do. And Jesus Christ did that a lot of times too. What's going on? So a lot of times with the healing and power, with Lazarus, whose faith was used? When Lazarus was dead. You can't use Lazarus' face, can you? There's a woman, a Canaanite woman, who came to him and says, please heal, come and heal my daughter. He says, I'm not supposed to go to people that aren't Jews. I can't take the bread and give it to the dogs. And she says, yeah, but don't the dogs at least eat the, the crumbs? What did he say? Oh, woman, great is faith. thy faith. Whose faith? So whose faith healed that woman? Hers. Was she an Israelite? No. Okay, an unbeliever. Okay, so whose faith? All right. So sometimes it's going to be your faith. It is done. Sometimes it's going to be their faith. And I think a lot of times, especially the body of Christ, it's going to be all of our faith together, creating an environment that is conducive for Yahweh to work. I can imagine a doctor coming in here. He's going to do some uh, miracles. He's going to want to start sterilizing things, right? So in that case, you can imagine Christ going, i got to get this guy to say this. i got to get her to say that. Uh, uh, the author, and all of a sudden here, he, he's still orchestrating things like, like a maestro, like, um, like a maestro. Here, here, we need a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and sometimes we're like, I don't even think this thing is working. If you're being obedient, guess what? It's working. It's, it's working. So whatever it is, all of us are running from something, whether it's a healing, a mighty work. Maybe it's confessing something that's on your heart that makes you feel really vulnerable. I sat here... Thir- f- you're fifth, gonna be 15, 16, 15, 16 years ago, and Yahweh told me to say, "You go confess, you're gonna shoot the biggest deer in all, <laughs> all parts of Kansas." I was only one, I was the only one going that wasn't a deer hunter. And you want me to do that? I had no idea that that was gonna be a part of you guys being born. Did you know that? I didn't know that. It's, it's a faith thing. Um, uh, now, uh, so t- troubleshooting your faith. Whose faith is involved? Sometimes it's going to be their faith. Sometimes it's going to be your faith. Don't give up. If you're being obedient, it's working, okay? And if you don't see a result immediately, it always works. You might not be able to understand it, but it always works. We're sitting around, and Dad and I were, Dad was talking about radio waves, AM waves, uh, Wi-Fi, and Tim says, Tim was a radio operator. He was talking, we're surrounded with all kinds of waves, you know that? We got Wi-Fi. We got Bluetooth. We got AM radios. Just do you pick it up? And faith is the same way. Receiving information, walking out in faith. Did you do your job? Yeah. Then then you can just say, I did my job, whether I see the results or not. Um, uh, let me see here. Now, um, now here, here's a. I, guess I never gave this testimony to anybody. I guess I never really gave this testimony accurately until I was in Africa recently. And thank you guys for all for praying because it went really really well. Um, now here's one of my testimonies. We were in Estes Park, Colorado. I had a Bluetooth, but it was only on one ear. And everybody was shopping, and I was bored, and so I was just wandering around. And so I went into, a, I ducked into a sports bar, ordered some nachos, and it, while I'm running around, I don't remember where Rachel was, my or my sister, but she was in Arizona, and she'd call me periodically. What are you guys up to? So she'd call, and I talk, answer, hello, on my Bluetooth. And uh, which is always kind of creepy with the Bluetooth. People don't know who you're talking to. Yeah. Right? Well, I sit down and and and, uh, and as I'm talking to her, I notice that everybody else at the sports bar starts eavesdropping, listening in. <laughs> Acting like they're not listening, and then and then she hangs up. I'm watching a get basketball game, killing time, eating chips. She calls back again, and as, as he, her and I start talking, they start listening in again. <laughs> 
I don't think you guys are being really rude, uh, but maybe they're just as bored as I was. And then after like the third, I think guy called. He goes, "Where are you?" I said, "I'm at a sports bar." He goes, well, "We're about ready." I was like, "I'm not gonna. I'm tired of following you guys around. I'll be here until you guys are done." Okay. And uh, all right, then, then Rachel calls back up, and I'm sitting there I'm talking. To Rachel again. These people are are listening. I'm like, hey, if they're gonna if they're gonna be eavesdropping, I'm gonna have some fun this time. So here, hello, hey, what's up, Ray? Now doing great, blah blah. She goes, "Where's Dad? Dad's over here doing this." Now the weather's great. There's no rain. Yeah, okay. All right. And she goes, "Okay, talk to you later." This time I didn't say goodbye. Now, oh, okay. Boto na PVT. Tu tu lish PVT kindi. Ria manos. Ta patara pa PVT. Tu tu lish kindi. Tere bolsche. Ta ha ha ta bolsche de PVT. Hung up and act like I didn't even look. No, and all these people were eavesdropping. I just started speaking in tongues out loud. Uh, uh, then I hang up. <laughs> I'm sitting there going, you know, might as well have fun. What? Do you know what happened next? As I'm sitting there, a very built athlete with a shaved head, military style, walks up to me. He goes, hey, how you doing? And as I'm doing real good, he goes, so where are you from? I said, I'm from Kansas. He goes, I don't, I don't remember where he was from. And he and he goes, so you you in the service? I said, no, I'm not in the service. I was wearing an army hat that Rachel had given me. I assume that's what, that's what, no, I'm not in the service. My, my baby sister's in the service. I, I'm a sissy or something like that. He goes, hey, I want, I want to introduce you to somebody. Come here for me for a second. I'm like, uh, so I get up and it's like an L-shaped bar. I'm, I'm sitting here. They're sitting over here. And he walks me over and here's this older couple. They look Middle Eastern, but they don't look like, like angry Middle Easterns. They look like they're Christians. And he goes, this is my mom and my dad. How are you doing? It's nice to meet you. How's everybody doing here? We started talking this and that. So then they, they, they start speaking a different language. I don't know if they're talking back and forth. They're kind of arguing. And then and then he found it. The, the mom and dad are sitting here, and this guy's sitting here. And the guy goes, hey, you, you weren't in the service? I said, no. And then, and then he goes, my dad wants to know, how do you know Farsi if you weren't in the service? <laughs> and then they go back and forth again. And then his dad goes, his dad goes the only white people that know Farsi... We're in the service because why would you even learn this language? Is that Kuwait or is that Iran? I forget which. It's it's mostly Middle Eastern. Yeah, it's one in one of these areas, and I go, I go, excuse me, you heard me saying what? And I was, I was speaking Farsi, and then he, I don't remember the rest, but it was some some sort of dialect. I don't know if there's more than one dialect or something like. That. And I turn, I look, and all of a sudden I'm like, what? And then, as this happens, guy comes walking. He sees me talking to people, Mister So. Aaron, everybody's waiting. Come on! And he yells at me. I'm like, and I walk off. I said, because everybody's waiting. I'm like, hey, I gotta see, I gotta see you guys later. Gotta go, gotta go. And as I'm walking, now all, all this isn't settling in as it happened. I, I'm still trying to figure out what happens. And I'm walking down the street, falling. Guys, mad at me. Surprise, surprise. Because <laughs> I'm not goofing off, me and Rachel. Um, uh, but anyways, as I'm falling, I'm going, what just happened? <laughs> And then, I, and then my, my my next thought was, what did I say? What did I say? I would, yeah. hope I didn't say anything. I'm thinking, I hope I didn't say anything embarrassing, right? I, I don't know what I said. Christ knew what I said. Then I had to go back. What did it say in Acts two? What did it, what when they heard the language they were speaking in tongues? What what were they saying? The mighty works of Yahweh. And then I went back, and, and as I thought about that, I went back and I went. That could have been a, a prophecy right for that man. The here this thing was, uh, I, Nathaniel, when you're under the fig tree, I saw thee. Mm -hmm. and, here, and, and as I'm walking off, I'm going to go, wow. So testimonies are real important. When I went, when I went to go meet David, uh, David Remy, one of the things that I wanted, uh, desired so badly, was to be a part of a mighty work for somebody else. I'd done stuff in my own life. I've had healing, incredible healings and things like that, but I've never been able to walk up and say, Get up! <laughs> or, or be sing, or, or peace be still, when it, when it was an instantaneous, and I had this desire that wouldn't go away, kind of like me in the weight room also when I was younger. And David was saying these, these things were happening in David's ministry. And I prayed about it, going, I, I, if this isn't real, let me know. But if it is real, I want to pursue this thing. So one of the first things I wanted to do when I, when I, I got when I flew to meet David, as we sat down, is I said I want to I want to know how this stuff works. As I you know I, how, how do you do this? How do you do these things? And I went I, so then I went on a monologue. I want to know how you do this. I want to know how you do. This. Now, how, how do you heal this? And how do you heal this? I'm, I'm thinking okay, cancer is this one healing, makes sense. Broken bones is going to be this type of healing, right? How about uh, blind people? How do you heal that one? I need to write this stuff down. I'm thinking there's formulas. 
And as I got done talking, David, David, he said, Aaron, I really wish it was that easy, but it's not. It's never that easy. And he goes, most of the healings that I, and this, this just gives you a good idea about David Remy. He goes, most of the healings that I got to be a part of, it was their healing, not mine. Or it was their faith, not my faith. And that's not what I wanted to hear. <laughs> I wanted him to give me a formula. And, and then when I got to learn for that first week, or the, the first week that I was in Kenya, it wasn't just their healing or their faith. There was a formula that was produced to raise their faith. It started with the music. So they do open air meetings. There was music, praising Yahweh, singing songs, a short teaching, praising, singing songs. These environments that I was talking about earlier. And then it'd come in with one or two testimonies. Somebody come up here who's got a testimony. Who's got a testimony? Who's got. Does anybody have a testimony of that? A short one they can share right now? A wonderful thing about testimonies is they start cloning. As soon as you hear one, I know you guys got one. That's how it works. Because you start, you hear a testimony, and guess what happens inside you? You're like, I got one. Oh, yeah, I got one. And then we start talking about that. That's what's so great about, about doing family road trips with believers. Because one testimony here, that reminds you of this. And all of a sudden, they start multiplying. But then I got to see not just that, but then one of the things that David did, which was unique, not just bringing up the testimony, not just getting the music together, not just getting people to do what they're supposed to do. Praise Yahweh. Be anxious for nothing. But then he'd get a word of knowledge, just like this guy, A.A. Allen. There's a woman here. And, 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 and that was probably the final piece. If Yahweh told you to get up in a church service and say, there's a man here, would you do it? Maybe we won't get to that point, but we should at least be thinking those things, going, help me get to that point. Yeah. To stand up. I, we, I just got to see, see a really neat testimony. I don't watch the NFL anymore because they're ashamed of our country. I feel bad for the Christians that are in the NFL, but Derek Carr did one of these things. That somebody called him out and said, if you're, if, uh, uh, something about commit to be a real Christian, that means you listen to him when he tells you to do it, you do it no matter what. And, and I don't remember the whole testimony, but Derek Carr said, I'll do it. And the guy goes, you think about it before you say you're going to do it. He said, I'll do it. <laughs> and the testimony was he, he was at a church service and all of a sudden he got a word of knowledge that there's somebody there that's going to commit suicide. Then he got a word of wisdom, asked for the microphone from the minister. Would that make you comfortable? Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and he did it. He says, um, hi, there's somebody who's going to commit suicide. The guy comes up, I'm the guy. And, and then he got the minister to that guy. So we got to get to those points. And then the idea with all of our life is <laughs> obedience. Forget about the results for a second, okay? Forget about the end results. And especially when the end results that you think don't happen. Who says you, it didn't work? Maybe it didn't work the way you thought. Who cares what you think? Obedience. Obedience, obedience. If you tell me to do it and I did, I did my job. Obedience. Let him, let him take care of all the rest. And this was a transformation we got to see with Peter. Peter, quit looking at yourself. Look at me. And when he tells you to do something, look at him. If he tells you to do it, and then rejoice. I did my job. And it, it could be laying hands on somebody, or, or it could be a word of knowledge. You are healed. It could be, I believe this, and whatever these things are. And remember, that if they're believers, Christ is already inside them. He'll stir the pot. And so, get these things moving. Um, we'll turn to uh, Mark 9, 17, 29. So, it's really important for all of us to practice these things, because we don't know... When we're, our number is going to get called, we'd like to think um, there's always going to be somebody here that's going to be able to do the mighty works. But what if it's going to be our child that needs the mighty works next? What if it's going to be somebody struck by lightning? And I've never practiced any of these things. You're up. What do you mean I'm up? You've never practiced any of this? You're up. It, it doesn't mean it can't work, right? But it's going to be a lot easier if you practice. Practice on plants. Practice on giving words. And the thing is, for a lot of believers, if you don't prophet, if you don't covet to prophesy, and you don't speak in tongues, then walking on water is going to be really difficult. <laughs> but if you speak in tongues and you covet to prophesy, like this, those are the, the, the two baby steps, then the rest of the things start coming. So if you don't speak in tongues, you don't prophesy, get started. And, then, uh, and so those are just the baby steps. But the prophecy, 
the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom and walking out, what if I'm wrong? What if I'm wrong? Throw that garbage out. Throw that garbage out. Was it confirmed through peace? Yes. Is it going to require faith? Yes. Oh, that's why I don't want to do it. <laughs> and you could even say, this might not be me. You saw the disclaimer. <laughs> There's somebody in here that's going through a divorce. And, and it's not going to be a divorce. It's going to be fine. And I, I, I got that right now. Somebody's really worried about their marriage. They're really concerned about some things going on. And there's some legitimate problems. And Yahweh says, don't give it another thought. Just one step at a time. One step at a time. This, and just I, I like to think of it as deliver the mail. He tells you to say it, say it. You're okay. Take a look at you. Hey, did anybody raise their hand? Nope. Did anybody stand up? Nope. What if Yahweh gave you the word to say, somebody in here is... <laughs> Somebody in here is a, 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 not even a Christian. They're a Democrat in here spying on us. Stand up. They didn't stand up. Did it mean you're a failure? No. If you spoke the word, you just do it. Uh, Mark 9, 17. <coughs> this would be the problem solving. Uh, if an adult could read... Uh, try to scoot things up a little bit. A man had a son that was not being healed. And we'll actually return to 9, verse 18. If somebody would start... Tim, would you read for me? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Just tell me when to stop. Okay. And whether wheresoever it seizeth him, it teareth him, and he foameth and grindeth his teeth and weareth himself out. And I spake to the disciples that they should cast it out, and they could not. Pause right there. Where's the finger being pointed right now? The disciples. The disciples. They could not. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. But he answering saith, O faithful generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And seeing him, the spirit straightway tear him. And fail, falling upon the ground, he wallowed foaming. And he... And he questioned his father, How long a time is it that this hath befallen him? And he said, From childhood. And we'll, we'll pause it for there. Sorry. The no, thing. No, no, fine. And that, this is good. Did Jesus Christ have to produce faith? Mm -hmm. Christ is problem solving. What's going on here? Obviously, this is not a regular. Had the, the 70s cast out demons? Have they done mighty works before? Yeah. yeah. So here's here's a, here's, a, here's a more complex thing here. Happens to doctors all the time. What kind of case is this? Hold on a second. What kind of case study is this? And here's Christ thinking. Does Jesus Christ have to produce faith now? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes I think of him at, at the right hand. He knows exactly what's going on. He, he's still figuring stuff out. So if you have to figure some stuff out, don't be so hard on yourself. How is it? How what's going on here? And so, how long has this been going on? Here's a, here's like a case study. Okay, verse 22. 22. And many times have they cast him both into fire and into waters that it might destroy him. But if anything be possible to thee, help us, having compassion upon I'm us. Pause there. And here's the second one. First, the disciples. It was them. They could not do it. The second one says, uh, the second part of verse 22, but if anything be possible to thee. God's in control. He can do anything He wants. You guys ever hear that? God is in control. Mm -hmm. God's sovereign. He can do whatever He wants. Same doctrine back then. This guy says, the disciples could not. You can do anything you want. Have compassion on us. What's missing from the formula? Compassion. That, that's what's taught today. He's in control. It just wasn't your time. There's only a certain amount of miracles you got to hear your teaching. And uh, Well, uh, he can do whatever he wants. We're not going to change that doctrine. So what's missing here? The same thing is happening here. What was missing with this man in his understanding and, and, in, and, and in his defense, I've never had a son like that. I've never had anything like that. So it's easy for me to pick on this guy. But you can do whatever you want. Just give me mercy. Quit withholding the good stuff. Heal my son. Right? Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ in verse 23. There have been two faults right there. The disciples and you. And Jesus said unto him, As for this, if it be possible to thee, thee all things are possible to him as faith. Where's the problem? Bingo! Ding, 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 ding. The problem was not the disciples. 
the problem was the father. And I think even with, with uh, A. A. Allen's testimony, maybe some of the problem was with the mom. I don't know. I don't know. But we, we do see, when we get to see results, we go, okay, in this word of knowledge, word of wisdom, here was, here's what, what happened. But I guarantee you now that woman was happy she, she realized 20 bucks. Um, and, and so then Jesus Christ turns it and he goes, the, the problem in this, not the problem, what, what's missing here, your faith. And what does the guy say? Would somebody read that next? Straightway crying out, the father of the child was saying, I have faith. Help my want of faith. Isn't that neat? Yeah. How, does, how, how do you get faith? Hearing. Yeah. Is spoken. Hearing. Yeah. Romans ten seventeen. What does he say? I have faith. You know what? That's a great response. I have faith. I need more faith. Mm -hmm. And cry, pow, kids delivered. Isn't that neat? If we got to see that in a church, it would look like Yehoshua. You're being really hard on the guy. Look at his situation. But some, some things about this situation that's important is I have been where this guy is. Do you know how, how could I be like where the father is? Because when I had something I knew was supposed to happen and it didn't work out, you know what I immediately did? I wanted to find somebody to blame. You want to? You think you got your your old man locked up in a basement in chains? Wait till something goes wrong. Somebody who did this? You did this. But here's this guy defending himself. And where, where was the problem? The father's faith. And so we should be doing the same thing: problem solving. Um, and, and what did Christ do? He cracked the code. And you know what? If you're cracking the code, are you gonna be stressed out? No, 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 no. He's not the problem. Christ's going. I'm pretty sure I'm not the problem. But I can figure this one out. Give me a second. So just go over there for a second. I, I, I can figure this thing out. My dad's good at that. Tim's good at that too. You, you come to him with a problem, they go, give me a minute. No, 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 don't tell me. I got this. I got this. I'm going to my dad sometimes. It'll be some math problems. You go, don't tell me anymore. Hold on a second. I got this. Is that faith? That's actually somebody enjoying the problem solving. And we can do the same thing. Um, let me see here. Uh, in Matthew 15, 34... Um, <coughs> yeah, if you guys turn there real quick. So what, what was messing with the Father? It was the Father's faith needed to be lifted up. Um, uh, sometimes there's miraculous things, instantaneous, immediate. But did, golly, think about this little kid. Uh, Man, wouldn't you like to wouldn't you like to see pictures of him as a grown adult? Mm -hmm. Did he have kids as an adult? Do you think he's four years old? Do you remember that? I don't remember when I was four years old. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Golly, how about the guy who laid at the gate, beautiful? Did Peter have any idea what was on the line with that man? How old was he? Was he forty? I think it was forty years. Forty years. Forty years. Oh my goodness, when I hurt my back this last spring, I couldn't walk for like six hours. Forty years, man. And can you imagine can you imagine John and Peter going to sleep that night? Have you ever, you know all of us have got to be a part of a mighty work, whether it's a prophecy or something. The hunting's a good one. And you go to bed that night, how much peace do you have? I got to be a part of that. What do you think it was like for Peter going, John, John, wake up, wake up, wake up. Did you see the look on his face? Oh my goodness. Oh man, that's great. Who cares what the Sadducees and the Pharisees think? Who cares what they think? Look at that. And if that was just a one thing, and, and, and when Jesus Christ was calling Peter, now Christ still had to cr uh, produce uh, faith. Yahweh has is, is got an understanding that it's like an ant trying to understand us. But could Yahweh possibly see that man when, 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 when he says, when Jesus Christ is picking Peter, this guy is really counting on you, Peter. How many people are counting on you guys right now? Yeah, I think it would be a good idea every once in a while when we do get peaceful to say, give me a vision of who's counting on me. Is it, a, is it, a, is it somebody who's being molested? Is it somebody who's going to die in a car accident, God forbid? Is it somebody who drowns? I don't know. And, and, and give me, a, give me a, a vision or give me something that's going to stimulate to show me to get out of my boat and, and stop being so afraid of failure and start being more concerned with obedience. Mm -hmm. Because G, if, if Peter didn't walk on the water, he would have sunk, but he could swim. But so could all the rest of the guys in the boat. Only one got out. Um, so it's, it's just a... Uh, 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 Matthew 15, verse 34. It's... Uh, 
Tim, would you read that? Mm -hmm. And Yehoshua saith unto them, How many loaves have ye? And they said, Seven and a few small fishes. There's, okay, so here's another mighty work. <clears throat> What's the problem here? M money and food. And what did he do? He goes, What do you got? And he multiplied what they had. I remember when David, Remy was uh, doing a teaching, I think it was here. He said some, some of the great works was, what do you got? I'll work with what you got. Yeah. And what do you got? And if you give what you got, is that a faith offering? Mm -hmm. It's a lot like that woman's $20. What do you got? Oh, I don't have anything. You're lying. I saw your wallet. <laughs> oh, whatever it is. So, so here's this thing. Give it. Uh, and Mark 6.38. Uh, we, I'll, I'll just speed up to there. And he said unto them, here's another instance. How many loaves have you? Go see. And they didn't know they said five loaves and two fishes. And think about that. Those things were multiplied. One of them was like 12 baskets. Can you imagine if that was the person, this is all I have. This is, the, this is all I have for me and my family. We're starving. My wife's going to be really upset if I give this away. i got six kids. Came back 12. What do you have? So look at so when we look at these things, Christ. When people will come to Him, we can look uh, to say uh, it could be somebody in a wheelchair. Go, what would you like from Yahweh today? What do you mean? What if He could give you anything today? What would what, what would you ask for? And they might say a mustache. What? All right. I, I would have thought legs, but who knows? And so okay. And then, and then, then we start problem solving. And then, what do you have here? So, in, in these cases, Christ multiplied this, and, and and he wasn't the first one. It was Elijah that did it with the bread. Um, turn to Second uh, Kings. Well, you know what? I said I don't want to go too long, since I, since I talked a whole lot. Um, in Second Kings chapter four, verse one, uh, there there was Elisha. And, he, and he, he, he went into, let me see here. Now a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets made outcry unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant, who uh, was one who revered Yahweh, now the creditor hath come to take my two boys to himself as bomb. And Elijah said unto her, What shall I do for you? Okay. And, and, and tell me what thou hast in thy house. And she said, Thy hand, the maid's servant, hath nothing at all at the house save a flask of oil. And Yahweh multiplied. And like what Tim said also in the teaching, that if there would have been more flasks, that then there would have been more oil. Um, what do you got? Uh, turn to Luke chapter 4, verse 16, 24. I heard another really neat testimony. Um, this was recent too. Um, about mighty works. Four, four. Chapter 4. I'll, I'll tell you the verse in a second. Luke's, the gospel called Luke. Now, when Lazarus died, a doctor, a VP where will point out that Lazarus was one, I think he's the only person that was named whom Je Jesus loved. There's a disciple whom he loved. We don't know who that was. He's not named. But it did say Jesus or Yehoshua loved Lazarus. He dies. He's sick. And the disciples are like, are you going to go? Hey, your, 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 the, your buddy, your BFF is sick. Should we go? No, he's sleeping. Oh, if he's sleeping, he's fine. He would look. He goes, Lazarus is dead. Too late? Okay. When Yehoshua goes to Lazarus, his, his sister comes to him. He goes, if you would have been here, where were you? And Yehoshua says, uh, it brings up the resurrection. She goes, I know. I think Yehoshua says he's going to live again. She goes, I know in the resurrection, but where were you? And what was neat about the teaching that Dad just recently shared is she had faith for the past. If he would have just been here, it would have been fine. Did she have faith for a future resurrection? Yeah. What was she lacking? right now. All of us like that, right? All of us. Man, I missed that buck. Oh, golly. Maybe the next time. No, call it back. Call it back. Right now. That's what he's looking for. Right now. We can't... Tomorrow we, is uncertain, right? The past is gone. All we have is right now. And Yehoshua was teaching, I'm here right now. I'm here to tell you, he's here right now. What do you want? 
Exercise your faith. Work it like a bodybuilder. Get strong. Get big. We don't know what's on the other side. I like to do it with the gym lifting, with doing supernatural lifting with the weights, which I'm nothing compared to what, what I'm supposed to be doing because we're supposed to be able to move mountains. Man. And, and if we're not exercising our faith, we don't know what's going to be called on us in a, in a week, two weeks. Maybe a car is going to roll on top of somebody. I don't know. And it's going to be up. You're up, Aaron. Okay, well, I've been practicing some of these things. And this is where we got to exercise these things and, and, and go, hey, if it doesn't work, my, my objective is to be obedient. That's it. And to be ready. You say, with, uh, what, what was it? Um, Oral Roberts said, I think, 10% of the people that he actually ministered got healed. Okay. If it didn't work, uh, 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 no, let me, let me take that back. If you don't see the results that you were expecting, okay, I did my job. Should I go back? Should I do any more? No? Okay. So you got, I got to get going. Do your job. The same way. And what that actually is, that's actually more faith. Um, Luke chapter 4, and we're going to read verse 16 through 24. Um, who would like to read <coughs> over on this couch, on the gray couch? Ooh, I will. Okay. The 16 through 24. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and entered according to his custom of the Sabbath day into synagogue and stood up on the road. And there was handed to him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. And folding the scroll, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath appointed me to tell you glad tidings to this destitute. He hath sent me forth to proclaim to captives a release and to blind a recovering of sight, to send away the crest with a, a release to proclaim the welcome year of the Lord. And folding up the scroll, he handed it to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue were infinitely fixed upon him. And he began to say unto them, This day is fulfilled with scripture in your ears. And all were bring witness to him, and marvel at the words of favor which were proceeding out of his mouth. And they were saying, Is not this the son of Joseph? He said to them, By all means ye will speak unto me this similitude, psych, uh, physician, physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever things we have heard of coming in the past, keep them do here in thine own country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is welcome to his own country. So when, when he is obedient and he speaks, basically saying, I'm the guy that couldn't believe the favor he said. Was this who they were expecting? No. no they're rejecting him. They're going, No, this is not the package we were expecting. <laughs> this is not the package. No, you're not the... And they're rejecting him. Verse 25. Uh, Tim, would you read 25 and 6? 26, please. And of a truth I say unto you, many widows were in the days of Elijah in Israel, when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, and when there came a great famine upon all the land. And unto none of them was Elijah sent, save unto Serpita of Sidonia, and unto a woman that was a widow. Stop for this. Okay. How many widows... Were in the days of Elijah. Many. 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 How many was he sent to? Two. One widow. No, one widow. One. Yeah. Was there a lot of needs? Yeah. Does Yahweh have a, a, a heart <laughs> for the widows and the fatherless? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We know through his words we're commanded to take care of them. Why was only one? Uh, in the verse 27. Isaiah, would you read verse 27? Yes. Verse 27. And many leopards were in Israel at the time of Elisha the prophet, but none of them was cleansed, save Naaman Na the Syrian. Naaman the Syrian. How many leopards? Many. 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 How many were cleansed? One. 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 Never noticed that. Why? Because that's where Yahweh sent them. Because they rejected the prophet. They rejected Yahweh or unbelief. That's not Yahweh. They have their own traditions or whatnot. No, 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 no. That's, that's not it. They rejected the prophets. They rejected the prophets. They killed the prophets. Or unbelief. Only one and two. And so if God is in control, 
He just pointed right there. No, the problem in, the, in those cases was unbelief. And they rejected it. And Jesus Christ used that as an example when they were rejecting him. Look, I'm here to serve. I'm here to help you guys. I'm in, look, yeah. How many sick people were... Do you think these people knew any sick people and widows? Absolutely. But if you, but if you reject the messenger, and so... We see. So what? What? So what happened with Jesus Christ? Um, he said it, uh, it was the same with Elijah and Elisha, which is neat. With it shows both of those people rejected Yahweh. They rejected the prophets. Um, <clears throat> and do the same thing today. How about speaking in tongues? How about prophecy? No, it's gone. How about Yahweh's name? What's the name of your God? Don't even say his name. Um, you know, and and then then if you if you come if you don't start teaching according to their their, their oral traditions, um, then that, that's going to be hard for them to believe. But you know what? Yahweh is even greater than all these things because we can still do mighty works, and we're supposed to. And one thing we're supposed to be able to do is to set, it, set ourselves apart. Is The Apostle Paul said, I did not come to you with great words and eloquence, but in demonstrations of power. For those who are just deceived... Who didn't know? They go, I don't care who you guys are. I want that. Dad was talking about that today. Simon the Sorcerer. <laughs> he gets saved, and then it, then, then it gets like a curse on him. He goes, oh, pray for me. Pray for me. <laughs> what a heart. Yeah. Right? And that's who we are called to. They're just two people. Can you imagine Elisha and Elijah? Man, if, if I was a prophet, you see lepers everywhere. Wouldn't you want to heal them all? Yeah, you'd have a desire, but he was only sent to, or, or, or only Naaman. So sometimes we'll see people that aren't being healed, and we'll look like maybe I should be doing something. Not necessarily. Uh, uh, all, it says, uh, let me see here, turn to 2 Peter 3 9. And this is where we should have a footnote with 2 Peter 3 9. Uh, we should have Luke 4 25 and 26. Because they're saying, God's just trying to teach you something, or there's just only a certain amount of healings. Uh, and we're going to say, wait a minute, what about Elijah and Eli Elisha? Why weren't many widows healed? <coughs> they try to kill these guys. You ever heard of Ahab and Jezebel? Yeah. And the, uh, Jesus Christ, what, what did the Jews do to Christ when he went to Jerusalem? They murdered him. Um, chapter 2, verse 3, verse 9. Eli, would you read that? Verse 9. Yeah. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering with regard to you, not being minded that any should perish, but that all unto repentance should come. Yahweh doesn't want anybody to perish. And and, and, he, and it says he's not slack. Yahweh is not slack. What that means is people believe that he's just kind of waiting, going, uh eh. I don't feel like it. No, he has done everything that he can um, to be, get people healed, um, and have, wanting none to be perished. Uh, but he is long-suffering towards you. And so we look at this thing, and okay, so even when we see people that are not healed, there could be whatever it is, we, we, and our heart pours out, is that the one? Um, and I, I like to think um, sometimes, does it take more faith to minister to somebody in a wheelchair or somebody with a Rolex and a Mercedes Benz. Hmm. Good point. It'd be very easy for me to go to somebody who lives underneath a bridge and think they need more of my help than somebody who has. Why would they need my help, right? Hmm. Our objective is we shouldn't be using these eyes. You just send me wherever you want me to go. Because there were times that very wealthy people and successful people were ministered to. How about Zacchaeus? You know, the church mocks this guy, Zacchaeus. Oh, this wicked tax collector. Oh, why? And, and, and who called him a sinful man? The people that hated him. Oh, he said, well, he, Jesus Christ be the sinful man. Zacchaeus goes, Master, I give half of all my money away. And who did Jesus Christ want to eat dinner with? Zacchaeus. Yeah, he was a successful businessman. And so our objective is, who do you want, who, who do you want us to heal? Uh, the help and, and healing could be emotional, it could be spiritual, it could be whatever it is. Sometimes it could be just to lay your arms on somebody, say, "Can I pray for you?" And sometimes, have you ever had somebody pray for you, and they're praying one thing, and something else is getting healed? Isn't that neat how Yahweh and Christ work? I've had that. Somebody goes, "I need, I got a word for you." I'm going, "Oh boy, here we go." And they start praying, and actually, when they when they start praying, I start zoning out, and it's almost like I start focusing on the real problem. And that's our objectives. Um. 
uh, Ma Mark or Matthew thirteen fifty five is a, is is another one. Um, problem solving, um, troubleshooting to do the mighty works. Sometimes we feel like if we just did a mighty work, well, maybe you know everybody would believe if we did it. No, not necessarily the case. Uh, you're saying now people people are always rejected. And then, then even with some of the mighty works, Yahweh wants faith anyways. So even in my own lives, when there's been mighty works that happen, even with me, a week or two later, I'm like, well, maybe. I start justifying things. Well, maybe this happened. And i got to say, nah, I'm, you know what? I'm going to give you all the credit. All the credit. You know, uh, but uh, Matthew 13, 55 Now, would you read that? Is not this mother called Mary, and are his brethren James and Joseph and Simon and Judas and his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence then had this one all these things? And they began to find cause of stumbling in him. But Yahushua said unto them, A prophet is not without honor save his city and in his house. And he did not their meant mighty works because of their unbelief. Their unbelief. Okay, so I guess so why didn't he do mighty, many mighty works? Their unbelief. And this can be the same way with us sometimes. It, 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 actually, it's easier to minister to, to strangers. I mean, yeah. is it easier to give a prophecy to somebody you don't know? To me, I'm, yeah, it's a lot easier. You're going to go, okay. Uh, and so, and so it, here's Yehoshua in his own hometown. Do you think he had flesh? Do you think there's some, some people that he wanted to heal? Yeah. And sometimes you're going to want something. It doesn't necessarily mean that's what you... It doesn't mean the, the, the situation's right. But he, but he was limited because of their unbelief. But we know that Yehoshua would love to have everybody healed um, that wanted it. Um, obviously, if it was a rapist and he wanted to get healed so he can go do horrible things again. No, you're, we're not going to... That would be a necessary. Um, but in that case, the problem was unbelief. And we've got troubleshooting. Um, we know that... Uh, Let's we'll turn to Mark chapter 5, verse 21. Page 39. <coughs> <coughs> and, and, you know, it's, uh, it, well, Christ could come back at any second now, right? Mm -hmm. so the, the, our hope is His return. And so, uh, so, so we shouldn't become be anxious for nothing. So if it's something in our own life that we're, that we're working on, if we start getting anxious, you might want to back off on a little bit. But unless it's something that He's telling you to work on, then go, don't stop. We, we don't know when, when our life is over. But uh, maybe He wants us to minister to ourselves or to somebody in our house because this is going to help us go to the gate beautiful. And sometimes those are the hardest ones to work on. Do you know why? Because we have what's a apparent failure over and over again. It's a lot easier to try something we've never done before, right? Yeah, I've never done that before. Now this is a new broken bone. But to go back to something, whether it's, well, it doesn't have to be healing, to work on that again and go, I don't want to do that again. I've tried that. Our objective is obedience. And if the th thought floats in, when you're on your prayer walk, when you're praying, you're singing, you're pouring out your heart, you're reading the Word, and all of a sudden it floats in again. Ah! No, not that one. No, we tried that. Get, get that out of here. And the idea is going, wait a minute, you want me to work on this? If you want me to work on this, I'm going to work on this. And that, that's the objective. You go, okay, how, how, can, how can we do this? Um, um, create a conducive environment. Get in the Word. If, if, you, if you perceive that a big... A big Requirements going to be needed of you. Go devote yourself to three days of nothing but the Word. Go to a Christian festival. I guarantee you, you got the mind of Christ. There's some place you can go where you're at, interacting, teaching the Word, sharing the Word, witnessing, witnessing, um, having dialogue, ar arguing, um, defending, exercising these things, and go put me in a position to start extra start start sparring these things. Uh, Give, give testimonies. Seek out testimonies. When, when I got to watch that one, I actually I watched that one on accident. I was doing work. This is really my first day back from Kenya, and, and I was saying, be, 
For nothing be anxious. For nothing be anxious. I been, I've been gone for work for 10 days. For nothing be anxious. And I, 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 and I was becoming anxious. So I put on Facebook, try to find some funny cat videos or something. And there was that, that little video like that. And I was like, that's interesting. I set it down and, and it started playing. I didn't hit play. Now Facebook now, now it just starts playing. And even if you don't hit play. And it starts playing. I'm like, all right, whatever. So I went back to go do my paperwork. And I listened to that involuntarily. Um, as, as I'm doing paperwork. And I had to stop. And you know what happened after I got done listening to it? I got to get more of that. Yeah. What just happened? I'm fired up. I got done listening to that. I, I went to God's generals. The dad already on the phone. I, I try to find something else. I go. I need more of that to, to prepare myself to, to help produce that environment. Mark eleven twenty one. We won't read through thirty three. Um, but but where that is Mark twenty one through thirty three is the woman with the issue of blood. So Yehoshua is supposed to be going to heal somebody. Um, uh, I think it was J.R. his daughter. And, and I, this is one's funny on, on the word of promise. Because it said the people are thronging on they're shoving around. You can imagine the disciples, hey, back off, buddy. Don't you know who that is? That's the Messiah. Hey, back off, back off, back off. Where he's pushing on them. And Yehoshua goes, who touched me? And Peter goes, the people are thronging on you. And you say, who touched me? <laughs> so Peter's so hilarious. But it's great on word of promise. And then Yehoshua goes, I know somebody touched me. I felt the power leave me. And the verse 34, a woman in 33, she speaks up, um, which is neat. Did, do you think she wanted to speak up? No. no. I don't think so. I remember Kenneth Hagin saying that she had an issue of blood, what she was supposed to be doing according to Levitical law. I've researched this. Was she supposed to say, unclean, unclean, I can't go in there. So she's kind of breaking the Levitical law in there. She, she's not going to be being real popular with the people around her. Who touched me? Oh, busted. I'm so busted. So here this woman's busted. And verse uh, 33, she, she says, I touched your mantle. And verse, uh, Isaiah, I want you to read 34 through 37. 33, 34 through 37? Yeah. Um, and he said to her daughter, Thy faith had been thee well, withdrawn to peace. Me whole from thy plague. Or yet he is speaking, they come from the synagogue ruler, saying, Thy daughter is dead, why further annoy the teacher? But Jesus, overhearing the word being spoken, saith unto the synagogue ruler, Do not fear, only have faith. And he suffered no one to follow with him, save Peter and James and John and the brother of James. Okay, so there's two neat lessons right there. Uh, we read earlier in Matthew 13, 55, he couldn't do anything because of their unbelief. In verse 34, whose faith healed this woman? Hers. Hers. Her faith. Hers. We should be ready to say, your faith has made thee whole. I, I don't know <coughs> if I've ever said that. We should be ready. If we get a word of knowledge going, according to your faith, be it unto you. And maybe that's the finishing touches. And y'all be ready to do it. But it was her faith. Okay, he wasn't even ready for it. Isn't that neat how it worked? And, and, and you see it through his ministry. He, he's, he's built a reputation. All of us should build a reputation. That is not a normal person. They speak weird. They say Yahweh. They speak in tongue. They speak in tongue and interpret. <laughs> My children do not fear me. Okay, uh, that, they're really, really weird. But who can lay the hands on the sick? Or who can give you a word of knowledge? Or who... Even, could be even more important than some of the mighty works that we desire. Could be like Joseph to Pharaoh. Who can talk to the creator of the universe? Joseph, you got the job. Congratulations. Same way with Daniel. And that's prophecy. Therefore, my brethren, covet to lay hands on the sick. Covet to prophesy. And boom. And guess what happens when we prophesy? What happens to their faith? What happens to your faith? It, it gets built up, um, and, and remembering when you when you're when you're going to be delivering these words, it's it's a tag team. If these guys are believers, he's already inside them. And maybe I might not say it right. Trust me, Aaron. I can interpret for you. You sure? <laughs> and you, I'll be saying one thing, and he'll be interpreting inside, going, "This is exactly what it means." And that's neat. After I give some of a prophecy, I get random people, and I say, you're, "Did you get blessed by that prophecy?" I've never had anything. I got to give uh, two prophecies in a gym in, 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 uh, in, in Cape Town, South Africa. And one guy goes, my, my eyes filled up with 
tears. I had to go, and he ran into the bathroom afterwards after this improv prophecy. I got to talk to him two, two days later, and I go, what was that like? He went, I've never had that in my entire life. Nothing like that before, ever. How did it feel? I go, it felt wonderful. I go, too much is given, much is required. You are obligated to do that same thing to other people. Well, how do I do that? And I got to go on. I said, did, you, did I have to explain what was right or wrong? You know, I knew it was right. I, I said, was I 100% right? He goes, no. <laughs> Who told you what was inaccurate? He goes, I knew. That's prophecy to believers. Okay? Um, uh, remove the unbelief was the last part. Christ was not going to heal Jairus' uh, uh, daughter. He removed everybody out. We have to remove unbelief out of our life. If we are watching unbelief on TV with garbage, uh, days of our lives or whatever, <laughs> it, 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 it could be anything that feeds on fear. we got to say, that's got to go. Why? Unbelief's got to go. Christ cannot do many mighty works of un because of their unbelief. Get rid of it, whether it's in the environment. We can look in here. You guys got to get out. I need to talk to this person alone. Even if it's going to offend somebody. Um, <clears throat> a neat thing with this, with other people's faith and believing, when I was in Kenya, the first time I was there, David put out flyers that, uh, that a mighty man of Yahweh is coming. Expect big miracles. I never talked on live camera. I never done anything like this. Or, you know, and I was going to be on stage with a microphone. Oh, man. You guys should be ready. And guess who was calling me out? Yahweh was. And then as I got ready to go on stage for the first time, I'm going with a microphone in the middle of like a jungle. You know what Yahweh told me through Christ? He goes, Aaron, quit stressing out. They don't care about you. They don't want to hear from you. They don't give you one thought. They're here to hear me. Me. It's all about me, okay? Oh, okay. So you just be a conduit. Speak my words and speak it in faith and let nothing shake you. Act like you've been here before, okay? Okay. So if you say something, you say something great, act like you've done it before. All right. So he's prepping me. I'm like, okay. So I got to do a little testimony, do a little teaching. It was, it was probably very, very poor um, because uh, I was probably I was talking about how far I'd come all around the earth just to see them. You know, I already told me they didn't care about me. Now, anyway, I get on stage, and, and, and after this revival, um, the, the sun's gone down. It's dark. It's very, very dark. There's no lights. And people start lining up in front of the stage. I don't know what's going on. And, and, and David comes to me. And, uh, and I was in an environment that was conducive for faith at the time. For what's called faith is certainty. You need to become more certain on something. Speak it. Create an environment. Remove unbelief, especially if it's TV or Facebook or whatever. And he, he goes, okay, Aaron, I'm going to minister to these people. They need healing. You go minister to those people. I'm like, right. <laughs> okay, then he turns around, walks off. I turn, and there's like three interpreters, and there's four people to walk to assist me. They're looking at me like, you ready? I'm like, yes, I am. I'm re ready to go. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my all goodness. Guys. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. Here's all this. I got, I got like this little posse with me. And... And, uh, but I've been thinking about what did, what did Christ do? And here's this woman. She's wearing a she's wearing a suit from probably 1945. It's covered in dirt. <laughs> Very poor. And uh, the interpreter says, uh, 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 he goes, this is this woman wants to be ministered to. And I go, ask her what she wa what's wrong. And and the, the interpreter goes back and forth. <laughs> Uh, he, he, he said, uh, she said that she's got a problem in her throat and she can't, she can't eat and she can't swallow and, she, and the doctors can't do anything for her. So I was doing something different than ever. And so then I said, ask her what she wants me to do. I, normally, I would, I'm just going to lay a hand and pray for that. Okay? And then he asked her and, she go, and, she, and then he asked, what do you want him to do? It sounds like somebody else, right? Because before this, Christ was going, Christ didn't lead anybody. What do you want? What do you want? What are you looking for? Uh, even the blind guy. Oh, Master, <laughs> Son of David! Hey, Master, what do you want? Um, let me think here. What can I ask for? Uh, uh, how about eyes? <laughs> but he asked. And so here's the same situation. I go, what, what, what does she want? She wants you to pray for her. Then, the then I responded again. Does she believe that, I, that, I, that, that she can receive healing through me? Uh, and then it came, okay, I guess we're going over. And, 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 
he said she did. She said yes. And as soon as I touched her, she collapsed on about six different people. And that was her faith or something else. We'll go ahead and wrap up. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you How long was that? An hour and ten minutes. <sighs> Yeah, this is 8.19, right. I'm not quite sure. Well, we, I know we started late, so, okay. Good job, man. Okay, Father, we thank you for these words. Um, do not be fearful and don't be so hard on yourself. I assume all responsibility if you're obedient. If you're obedient, I take care of all the little things. What I want you to do is separate yourself from the confusion. Separate yourself from the unbelief. And you've really got to separate yourself from the relationships that, that keep holding you back. You know what you're supposed to be doing. Be following me. I'll take care of those people and stop letting them be the excuse why you don't follow me. Be following me and I'll take care of all the rest of these things. And it could be the reason why these people are not being healed and not being taken care of is because you won't leave them. Wow. My children, do not be afraid or fearful of anything because I am bigger than that and I am bigger than them and um, you must always remember whenever you need help just ask whenever you're afraid or need help or can't figure something out just ask be seeking be knocking for if you have faith I will always have the answer <laughs> My children, if you see me knocking at your heart, let me in and lock all the doors, open the curtains. If you see the adversary, lock the doors, close the curtains. For let me in your heart, I can help you. For the adversary can't do, won't help you at all. My child, follow me so you will have what you need. If you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can move mountains, as I have said. So have faith bigger than a mustard seed, and you can do unspeakable things, things beyond your imagination, beyond the imagination of a child. Have faith bigger than a mustard seed, and you can do things. Amazing works. My children, stand out. Like in the giant, when there's a giant heap of snow, there's thousands of snows. My children, stand out. Don't be the snow that's just the one ginormous pile and ev everything's white. Don't be the people that want to hide in the crowd. My children, stand out. My children, to stand like me, to stand like us is a... <coughs> we must stand alone. It's a very small group. So... Stand alone and don't chase um, others. Amen. My sons and daughters, if if you had if you have something that it was squeaking, that you would oil it. And if you had things that were if you had water or or fluid on your floor in your room, that you would mop this up. The same way I call you to be tending to the things that I've been given to you. That that as you see these things. Tend to them and do not put them off. For as you put them off, that it, it creates more work for you and it, it it burdens you and holds you back from things and blessings that I am willing to pour out upon you. Yera moi eta sa segeni ya men boroko diena kosa men boroki ti alebe a kwan shuri ya mera fun shuri ya kotale in peros. Once again, once again, I am here to speak to you. I am here to build you up and I am here to encourage you, but I'm also here to comfort you. And know that as you walk out and you do those things that you were afraid of, never forget that I have my arms wrapped around you. And because of my son and what's available through the Holy Spirit, 
where your feet go is holy ground. Don't doubt yourself. Put your faith in me, not in you, but in me, and I will guide you whether you desire to go, and I will give you the strength, whether it's physical or mental or spiritual, I will give you the strength to enable you to do the things that you want. Mm -hmm. 